And so today, come to the conclusion of 2 Samuel 22, verse 33, where David declares, God is my strength and the power, and he makes my way perfect. Speaking from the topic, God is everything you need. And so the final thing David says is that God makes his way perfect. Now, what does the word perfect mean in the Hebrew? The word perfect in the Hebrew is tamen, and it means unimpaired. It means that you are not physically weakened or damaged when God makes your way perfect. Pertaining to godly character, it means sound, wholesome, innocent, having integrity. Relating to our steps is, is pertaining to the path that God has chosen for us to walk. So David is speaking of himself and he says, look, God has made my way perfect. Physically, I have not been weakened or damaged and we know that he was a man of war. So he's talking about his physical strength. I have always, during my years as a warrior, from the day I fought the bear and the lion until I became a really old man and had to sit on the throne and send others to fight, God made my way perfect physically. I've always been strong enough to fight every battle. Pertaining to godly character, eventually he was able to make my way perfect. I would have slipped up with Bathsheba and Uriah, but at the end of the day, God made me innocent. He caused me to walk in integrity and spiritual soundness. Pertaining to the path that I should take, it was God's path alone that I walked in. I did nothing of my own or veered off course. So he's saying he made my way perfect. So that tells me that if we really entrust God with our whole lives, that we wouldn't make any mistakes. If you really want to prosper, if you really want God to make your way perfect, you will give God the control like the songwriter who says, Jesus, take the wheel. Not only the wheel, but the brakes as well. Because sometimes God needs to press brakes that we can stop and have a sailor and take into account where we are about to go or what we are about to do. The question to be asked today is, how does God make the way of a believer perfect? There's so many things that God does to make our way perfect. When God makes the way of the believer perfect, he sees to it that he's not weakened or damaged by losing his strength in battle or become physically injured by his enemies. When God makes your way perfect, some nice people set traps for you. I, I, remember, <clears throat> I remember renting a room in Canarsie, and there was a Haitian man who lived there that he hated me, like we would say in Beijing, like poison. He hated me for no reason. He just hated me. I've, I've known people to dislike me, but he hated me with a strong hatred to do me harm. And so because I was renting a room, it meant, that everybody, it meant that everybody used the bathroom, the face basin, and the shower. So I was the only one who cleaned. I became Mr. Clean because I'm accustomed to clean. So I would always be cleaning. And whenever I would go to use the toilet, I would make sure I have my Clorox to, you know, spray the seat and wipe it down and spray the, 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 the tap, you know, people when they're brushing their teeth, they leave everything everywhere. And so this particular day I did that to the toilet and I flash it and this brown thing start to come out. You know when you put that oil in water, it gives off a white thing? Those of you who are young like me, you know there's something called J's fluid, which is darker. So then it gives off a more like um, smoke-like thing in the water. The, 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 the thing that the Dettol does, the J's fluid does it darker than that. And so when I flushed the toilet, that began to come out of the, the tank. And I flush it again. And I flush it again. And I flush it again. And I had the door open. 
And I happened to look back and saw him at the door peeping. He had put something in the tank that would have done some kind of injury to me. And he was watching and waiting for me to use the bathroom for whatever it was to hurt me. But when God makes your way perfect, whatever will injure you, God move out of the way. And so I flush and I flush and I flush until the water was pure. And then I made sure that I put paper in the, the toilet so that there was, wasn't going to be anything coming back. And so this is what David is saying. He's saying that when God makes your way perfect, he sees to it that you are not weakened by physical strength and that nothing injures you. He sees to it that you are protected. And so when people set traps for you and you believe that God will make your way perfect, he will cause it to be exposed. He will cause you to know of it before you sit down in that seat. When people beg for you over the weekend, these are things that happen. And they bring it for you. God will make your way perfect in causing you not to eat it. You could have in your mind, I'm going to take this home and I'm going to put some jam on this. And you go to the store and buy something and forget it on the counter and get on the train. And you, oh my gosh, I forgot the bread. You had to forget it. Because God was making your way perfect. Sometimes people give you money. And the money is some good money. It's U.S. money, but it's not good money. And you don't put it in your purse. And for some reason, you walk into a dollar store and you buy junk. What is happening? If you put that with your money, the curse is going to mess with your finances, your checking account, your bank account. So God got it away from you by causing you to spend it, you know, just to make sure that you don't bring that curse with you or have it with you. These are ways in which God makes our way perfect. Because before the ancients went to war, just like David would inquire of God what to do, they did the same. And they performed a lot of obi on witchcraft, as we see with Haman. In the book of Ezekiel and Isaiah, it talks about the king of Babylon coming and how he stops in the fork of the road and he begins to read the entrails or the guts or the stomach of the animal that was sacrificed because that was one way of performing divination. And so when David says, God makes my way perfect in the battle that I'm not weakened or injured, he's letting you know that witchcraft don't prosper. Sorcery don't prosper. When God makes your way perfect, when he's your rock, when he's your power, when he's your might, when he's your army, there is nothing that the devil will seek to do to you that can cause you to be harmed. And this is where God wants us to come back to. As believers, understanding who he is. Sometimes we read the scripture and we just run over it. Do you understand? Even without the Hebrew meaning, what the word perfect means in an English dictionary. It means flawless, infallible, nothing wrong, no discrepancies. It's not long and short. It's not crooked. It's not rough. It is just perfect. And so when God makes the way of the believer perfect, he sees to it that he's not weakened or damaged by losing strength in warfare or become injured physically by his enemies, even when they plan to beat you up, even when they set people in place to rob you. You, you know, some people have a particular path to take to go home. And somehow God puts it in your mind, why not try the, the two train or the J train, you know, and take a different route. And they're waiting for you because they know you travel this road five days a week from work, every Sunday from church, every Saturday from the supermarket. But God is making your way perfect. He tells you, get an Uber. He causes you to meet a friend. He makes your way perfect. In the New Testament, we see the Lord making the way of the Apostle Paul perfect. 
as Paul would preach, he had two enemies, Alexander the coppersmith and Hymenaeus, that sought to do significant harm to Paul's ministry. Wherever Paul would preach the gospel, and the gospel has to do with man being a sinner and Jesus being the, the sin offering that God sent and his death and his resurrection, they would come behind and they would begin to teach error and say that the resurrection is already past. And it will cause people to stumble. And so Paul tells us that in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 to 9, he says that he was not weakened or damaged by the enemy while doing God's work. He says, a thorn in the flesh was given to me a messenger of Satan to buffet me because Paul is looking beyond the face and seeing the enemy. Like I said, that behind every face is a demon. Behind, behind Alexander the coppersmith and Hymenaeus is a demon spirit that is seeking to frustrate God's will through Paul. And he says, concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. In other words, there is nothing that anyone could have done to stop the success of what God was doing to hinder Paul or to cause him to throw in the towel. God made his way perfect. And how was this way made perfect? He gave him the grace. And when you read the book of Acts, you will see that wherever Paul went, he came under persecution. He was either beaten and arrested and thrown into prison. He either had to run for his life and go to another city. He was rejected one way or another. But God made his way perfect in that whatever the enemy tried to do, to hinder what Paul was doing for the Lord, he never succeeded. Yes, people rose up, but after the seed was planted, after there was a Titus to carry on, after there was a Timothy to carry on, because the devil was really afraid by the ministry of the apostle Paul. And he felt that if he got rid of him out of Corinth, that the church of Jesus Christ would die. But Paul never left until he had someone to take over. Someone that he had mentored. And he knew that they had uh, the spiritual maturity and development to carry on the work of Jesus Christ. In addition to this, <clears throat> with the exception of Luke, Paul was alone in a Roman prison awaiting a death sentence. Most of his colleagues and supporters from Asia deserted him because they were afraid of what Emperor Nero would do to them. Having to face this adversity alone, Paul speaks of the Lord making his way perfect in spiritual warfare in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 16 to 17. He says, at my first defense, no one came to my support. Everyone departed me, but the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength, and I was delivered from the lion's mouth. He likened Nero to a lion. He was that vicious. And so God made his way perfect. Christians were running from Rome because of what Nero was doing. And so Luke had gone, and he was alone. But he says at my first defense, God made my way perfect. What Nero wanted to do to me, he couldn't do. That's why he was in prison for such a long time. Nero could not touch Paul until he had done everything that God had called him to do. And so we can deduce for those who want to kill your anointing today. Those who want to kill your purpose and destiny. Those who want you to shut your mouth and to stop declaring the word of the Lord, they're going to fail because they can't shut it until God is ready to close it. It reminds me of yesterday. Don't laugh at me. I went to the doctor. I had to go back to the doctor after the surgery. So I had some stitches in my back, and my friend who's a nurse told me that they were dissolving stitches, so I felt good. And yes, praise God, they're going to dissolve. But I realized I was still feeling it, but I believe they were dissolving. 
So when I got now to see the doctor, he said to me, oh, we are taking out the stitches today. So I started to cry. I said, and I held my head. I said, oh, God, it going to hurt. It's going to hurt. Doctor, I can live with the stitches for the rest of my life. They're going to hurt, and I'm crying. And he said, I promise you, I promise you, it's not going to hurt, and I'm crying. He said, this, this lady here, she will take it out. She's good at it, and I'm crying. So then I said, you don't have an injection or something. No, I'm willing to take an injection because I could just imagine the pulling and the tearing and the pain. I said, you don't have an injection you could give me for the pain? She says, no, there's nothing. So she went and she got a little latakian gel, pain gel, and rub on the thing. Listen, if I ever preach the gospel in the hospital, I did. I turned over on my belly, and I put the tissue to my face, and I said, Jesus, I need you. Oh, God, you are my strength. Lord Jesus, help me, help me. And I'm saying, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I'm talking about opening your mouth. Sometimes you don't know where you're going to open your mouth to declare the gospel. And so in my apprehension of feeling the pain, I'm calling his name Jesus, Jesus, in a place where people can't call his name, uh, but you are my strength. Uh, and I'm calling his name, and I'm crying for their life. Uh, and I'm like this, Jesus, I need you. If I ever need you, God is now. Help me, Jesus. And the lady took out the two stitches, and I didn't even know they were out. I mean, if you see the cry that I put down, if you hear how I call on God, you would think I was uh, throwing me out of an airplane. I said, it's over. It's over. You're an angel. May God bless you. <laughs> but in, 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 my, in my distress, the only thing I could do was call upon the Lord. I call upon the Lord and quote the word of God. I'm saying, the devil can't shut your mouth. There's no one that can shut your mouth from declaring the word of God when God make your way perfect. Because they get to know who God is uh, and that he's a strength in my life. Uh, and who knows what seed was sown because the doctor was a Jew. And he knows Yeshua. It was him that I called upon. And so Paul declared that God made his way perfect in the proclamation of the gospel. And one of the things I always say, if some person don't want to hear the word of God on the air train, you can go to the B train. If they don't want to hear you declare it in the house where you are a member, you can tell it to your neighbors. There's always an opportunity for God to make the way of the believer perfect, but you've got to trust the Lord. When God makes the way of the believer perfect, he removes all of the obstacles that block up his path or that are preventing him from advancing and achieving success in life. He removes people who do not want you to succeed that are blockish in your way and sometimes you are traveling with the wrong person. Sometimes you are traveling with the wrong person. Sometimes when people are very close to you and giving to you and kind to you and love you, they're not doing that because they care about you. They just want to be where you are to block your success. The Bible tells us that when God called Abraham, that he brought his family along with him and he brought Lot. The meaning of the word Lot is veiled. And for as long as Lot was with Abraham, there were some things that God still wasn't going to reveal. And so in order for Lot to be removed, God permitted the conflict between the herdsmen and a decision then had to be made. Look at all the land. We are right here. Look at all that grass. Choose what you want. He gave Lot the opportunity to choose. While Abraham was the one to choose because God had given the land to him, he said to Lot, choose. And so Lot chose what he wanted and departed. And the moment the veil was gone, the moment Lot was gone, the Lord said to Abraham, now look up and count the stars. If you can count the stars, then you know how many your descendants will be. And I am saying that there sometimes there are people with you that you love that are a veil. They're preventing you from seeing. They are hindering your success. And so you have to 
get rid of them in the sense ask God to remove them from out of your way. The Bible tells us that in the year that Uzziah died, Isaiah saw the Lord. God is a God of hookup and connection. And so it is wise to pray and say to the Lord, if there's anyone in my life that is a hindrance, I ask you, God, to remove that person in love and in peace. Because when God makes your way perfect, he removes people. He removes people that give you advice that is not God's advice. Are you hearing me? Sometimes people tell you, take the job, take the position that is posted on the board. Or you can get the job done, step out in faith. What they try to do is to push you beyond the faith or the grace of God upon your life to take a position that will get you gone. And so that's why we're to always acknowledge God in everything that you do. So every friend is not a friend. They are dead there to make certain that you do not succeed. And so the Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 57 verse 14, it says, The Lord says, clear the road. Get it ready for my people. Remove the obstacles out of the way of my people. This is the command that God gives. He wants everything and everyone that is standing in your way to be gone. In Malachi chapter 2 verse 13 it reads, I God will burst all confinements and lead you out in the open. You will follow your king. I will be out in front leading you. God is saying, whatever has, have you boxed in? Whatever have you boxed in? He says, I'm going to burst it loose. And I'm going to go ahead of you because I'm going to lead you out. I'm going to show you the way out of your confinement. Sometimes you find yourself stuck in a season. That's why change isn't coming. Because you are stuck in a season. And sometimes the reason why we are stuck in a season is because I'm waiting for you to come up. You need to let go, release, and move forward. Are you hearing me? Because when you have a BFF and that person is not as, what's the word I want to use? As, as ambitious as you are, or the, the measure of favor that rests upon your life, it's not upon theirs. Sometimes we feel badly and say, well, I don't want to move ahead without you. So as soon as you move from here, then I will come behind you because I have a guarantee that I will make it. And so what you do, you cause yourself to be stuck in a season. And because you're stuck in a season, your success is not going to come. You have to move forward. And that's why it's important that, that you make certain that you're constantly traveling in the realm of the spirit. I remember again, I was living on East 35. And when the lady started to act up, the Lord said to me, you failed the test with the Haitian man. He said, you have to pass it because if you do not pass this test, you are going to be stopped in this season with the same anointing, he said, for an indefinite period of time. And so sometimes uh, the reason why our way is not made perfect is because we've allowed ourselves to be stuck in a season. Or we allow people to, to cause us to enter into covenants and promises that are not of God. I want you to promise me that you won't leave this job and, and leave me here. Or some person is dying and I want you to promise me this and I want you to promise me that. And we find ourselves making promises or covenants with people that keep us stuck. And until you go to God and renounce him and ask him to release you, you are not going to move forward because it is selfish of an individual to want you to stay back rather than see you go forward. And so when God makes your way perfect, he reveals to you who's the Uzziah that is standing in your way. He reveals to you what covenant, what promise, what pledge, what loyalty, what commitment that you have made to 
someone or to something that is stopping you from succeeding because many of us have missed our success in that we should have gotten it a long time ago but we didn't do anything. I want you to know so also that unforgiveness can have you stuck in a season. And, and so what I do when, when it comes, I release it. And it mostly comes in the area of money. You know, somebody have what is mine and they wouldn't give it and I want it. You know, I really need it. Not that I want it because it's mine, but I, want, I need it because there's a need. And I find in each instance, I have to pray it out, forgive it, and let it go because I want to come into this season. So if it happened yesterday, I must not be living in yesterday, today. I should not be that far back in July. I should not be on July 9th or June 15th. Because of something that has happened. You've got to forgive, release it, let it go, and allow the Spirit to bring you into blessing. Because you might have lost a hundred dollars there, but you're walking into a thousand. Are you hearing me? You might lose a friend there, but you are walking into a better one. Whatever it is, when God makes our way perfect, he removes every hurdle, every circumstance, every individual that stands in the way of our success and prosperity. When God makes our way perfect, he reveals to us the paths that we should take. You know, when we were younger Christian, you had a plan for your life, and you decided this was the path, so to speak, that you would take. When God makes your way perfect, he tells you where to walk. He teaches you how to serve you, that the word perfect in the Hebrew is the word Derek, and it means God's mode of action or how the Lord does things. God teaches you how to please him and how to serve him when he makes your way perfect. One of the things I look at uh, as I travel and minister is how people um, treat God and treat the things of God, how, how they function when it comes to ministry. You know, this, I, I've gone to places and it's in the midst of praise and worship and it's high and you have to stop it because... A human being just come through the door. You see, when God makes your way perfect, he teaches you how to honor him. There's none greater than God. I don't care who it is. Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. And so when we enter worship, that's God's time. If the president comes in, he has to sit down because we have to teach the world that God is king. We have to show them uh, that he's worthy of our undivided attention. It doesn't matter if the Pope comes in or the archbishop. Right now we are worshiping God and you are secondary. When it's time to honor flesh, we will honor flesh. And so when God God makes your way perfect. He teaches you how to please him in your giving, in your service, in your loving kindness, in, in, how, you, in how you minister to the Lord, how you honor the Lord. Because the only way, way people get to know how to please God is by watching how you please God. And so when he makes your way perfect, he teaches you how to do it. Remember when David went for the ark the first time? He didn't know how to honor God. And so it caused the death of a man. Because he treated God like the Philistines uh, who don't know anything ab about God treated him. Because God permitted them to send him on a cart. It doesn't mean he's to ride on a car. His people should know how to treat him. Are you hearing me? That's how Jacob knew that Joseph was alive. Uh, because he realized uh, only a son that knew a father could send a gift like that. And so when God made David's way perfect, he got the sanctified priest. 
and he got the blood sacrifice and everything was in honor of God and there was the worship uh, and there was a song of the Lord going up uh, and the Lord walked through the gates of Jerusalem uh, and sat in the tabernacle that he had built for the Lord uh, and so as Christians God makes our way perfect by teaching us how to reverence him uh, and how to praise him that means we don't talk on the phone in church uh, we don't play games and uh, we don't peruse the website it's one thing if it's an emergency and your phone has to be on uh, for the plane that comes in or the doctor that is calling I mean God is a God of understanding that's what the Jews couldn't understand when Jesus healed on the Sabbath he said the Sabbath day was not a day to do your nine to five but it was a day to do good if the sick needed help you needed to, um, to, to do what was necessary to help the sick and so when you know how to serve God when he makes your way perfect uh, you turn the phone off uh, and everything on the outside has to wait uh, until you finish bless the Lord uh, and receive the word that he has given uh, and the ministry of the anointed when the way of God is made perfect in terms of ministry, God is honored highly, 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 highly. Thank you, Jesus. When God makes the way of the believer perfect, he makes the path or the route he takes perfectly straight and smooth and clear of every impediment. When God makes the way of the believer perfect, he removes the curse that brings an end to demonic oppression. There's still believers that have an illegal curse operating over their lives. Something that their father, mother did or four parents did. But when God makes your way perfect, you've got to know the curse is gone. When the curse leaves, it doesn't mean that the devil won't try to bring it back again. But when you recognize any any anything of it happening you begin to speak the word and you said to the devil no Jesus took care of this he took care of the curse every curse when God makes your way perfect only the windows of heaven are open over your life he causes his face to shine upon you and he is gracious unto you when God makes your way perfect you are blessed and you're getting up and sitting down you're going out and coming in because he has removed every danger it mean if you couldn't get pregnant in your family you're going to get pregnant uh, if there was no marriage in your family you're going to be married uh, if there's prison in your family you're not going to prison whatever is the danger whatever is is, is the loss uh, all of that is gone uh, and your life is fruitful when God makes the way of the believer perfect he destroys all your enemies uh, the enemies of sickness and poverty man who becomes your enemy and even racism to put everything in a capsule when God makes your way perfect there's nothing or no one that troubles you the crooked path is straight the rough path is smooth that which is lost is found what was sick is now healed he is the strength of your life and you know for sure that the road you are walking is the one that God wants you to be on. If ever a time in my life that I've known that I am in the perfect will of God, it is now. And being in the perfect will of God doesn't mean that you are exempt from tests and trials and hardships and disappointments. It just means that whatever God allows to come your way, it has a spiritual blessing and benefit. And in the end, uh, everything uh, will work together for your good. Stand with me, please, in the presence of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I was just saying the same thing. Bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
It's God's desire to make our way perfect. And it's God's desire for us to be successful. And as God looks down through the earth, like he says, he looks through the whole earth to show himself strong in behalf of those that are loyal to him. He sees what is in your way that you don't see. He sees the prayers that have been prayed over your life that are not good prayers. He sees the conversations that people have engaged in for your demise that have activated demons and devils whose mission and mandate is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He sees everything. He hears everything. But just like David said, he's my strength and my power, and he makes my way perfect. That's why he sent the word to heal the disease. I can assure you today that the spirit of the Lord is here to make your way perfect. Whatever it is you're going through, whatever it is you're encountering, whatever you want fixed or remedied, if not for yourself, maybe a brother, a sister, a daughter, a spouse, whatever it is that concerns you, God is here today to make your way perfect. And so I want to lift you up now before the Lord. Hallelujah. To stand in the gap for you as your Ezekiel intercessor. To join my faith with your faith. That God will bring you out of whatever season that you should not be in. Into the season that you should be in. That God would remove people and things and promises and pledges. That is stopping you from having everything in your life. In time and season as God ordained it. And so Father today I lift up your children. Even those who have gone through the door. Those that have had to leave. I lift them up before you, almighty God, today I've delivered your word. You are their rock. You are their strength. You are their army. You are their might. And you alone make the way of mankind, especially the believer, perfect. And we all differ by name and nature, different nationalities. So does our circumstances. And I believe you today, God, by faith. To make the way of my brothers and sisters perfect in the name of Jesus. Move every law, every statute, every edict, mighty God, every addendum, every amendment, every clause. Remove everything, mighty God, that stands in the way of their success and prosperity in the name of Jesus Christ. Remove people, friends and family. It doesn't matter who it is. Whatever man, whatever human be a mighty God that is in their lives, but it's not for the good. I ask you to remove it now. Remove that person or persons now in the name of Jesus Christ that their mighty God will be able to walk in to the success. Remove the lot. Remove the individual mighty God that does not mean them well in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, every covenant, every promise, Every pledge that they have made, every vow that they have made that is not your will, that binds them or holds them back. I thank you today, God, in the name of Jesus, for freeing them and loosing them from it. In the name of Jesus Christ, who the sun sets free, is made free indeed. And I thank you, God, in the name of Jesus, that they no longer have to keep that promise. It doesn't matter who says you break your word uh, or you didn't keep your promise uh, it was not your will uh, it was the will of men uh, anything that they felt bound to do uh, or obligated to do uh, I thank you today almighty God uh, in the name of Jesus that they're free uh, they're free to walk into their season uh, as you have moved the Uzziahs uh, you have moved every statute uh, every law every precept every promise uh, every commitment you have moved it almighty God and now they can walk in walk into a season of blessing a season of prosperity a season of happiness a season of peace a season of tranquility a season of abundance a season of relaxation a season mighty God a new dwelling place in the name of Jesus transportation I thank you God as they forgive men their trust 
uh, they've moved from yesterday uh, and they're into today and going into tomorrow in the name of Jesus Christ uh, because you have made uh, their way perfect uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Father, I bind uh, that which is already bound in heaven and the earth. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, every kind of demonic activity within my rule and measure, every curse, uh, every family curse in the name of Jesus, uh, any blight, uh, any famine in the name of Jesus, any barrenness, uh, any lack, any need, any want, uh, the locust, the locust swarm, uh, the canker worm and the palmer worm, uh, everything that stands in in their way right now almighty God I thank you in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God for blessing blessing I speak the blessing of God over your life I speak it into your life on the job in the church in your home in your families I speak it into your body and your bank accounts into your wallet and purse in the name of Jesus Christ I speak success I speak prosperity. I lose that which God has already loosed in heaven uh, in the earth realm for you. Uh, the uncommon favor of God, uh, the goodness of God, the sudden leads of God, uh, everything that God uh, has prepared for you. Uh, in times and season and in epochs, uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, by moment and second and minute and hour, by night and day, hallelujah, by day and week and month and year, uh, I lose your blessing, uh, for I've already bound up all the works of darkness uh, that comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy, to delay, to hinder, and to deny. Uh, I rebuke it and curse it uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, Father, frustrate uh, the works of the enemy in the name of Jesus uh, but loose as you have already done uh, every blessing and every goodness and every prosperity every good thing that God has prepared for you in its season I decree and declare by faith by virtue of the fact of the revelation and the word that God has given to me that you're walking into your season. Uh, I want you to take a step of faith like I am. Uh, take that step, that physical step uh, that denotes that you're walking into it. For God's word uh, will not return unto him void. Uh, in the name of Jesus, I'm walking to, walking into my promotion. Uh, I'm walking into my increase. Uh, I'm walking into my abundance. Uh, I'm walking into my blessings. Uh, I'm walking into my deliverance. Uh, I'm walking into my freedom uh, on my right hand. I'm seeing the enemy fall. Uh, on my left, I'm seeing the enemy die. Uh, I'm walking into more than enough. Uh, I'm walking into my peace. Uh, I'm walking into my joy. Uh, I'm walking in uh, to all the good things uh, that God has prepared for me. Uh, I'm walking into it, Almighty God, uh, for you have made my way perfect. Uh, there's no obstacle in my way. Uh, there's no enemy in my path. Uh, there's no curse over my life. Uh, there's no blight over my life. Uh, my way is clear. My path is smooth. My path is straight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Father, I seal it in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for doing exceedingly abundantly above all that I could ask or think of according to the mighty work in uh, of the Spirit of the Lord in us. Uh, Father, I bring every prayer request uh, that is brought to this ministry to you. Uh, and I thank you for making the way of the people who've called for prayer in various areas or spoken to us individually, directly, for making it perfect. Bless this offering, God. Uh, I thank you for making it perfect. I thank you for the increase. Uh, I thank you, God, for the abundance. Uh, I thank you you God for paying every bill in this house as you promised to God for you are our source and our strength now may the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you may the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace success keep your way perfect at all times victory over every enemy Light in the darkness and prosper you and your going out and coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. God bless you.
God bless you.